A Murder at the End of the World, Season 1, Episode 1, Thoughts. This episode is called Chapter 1, Um Fatal. Does that make me sound really, like, obnoxious and, and like, full of myself that I know French? Because I am, but I don't actually know French. Anyway, yes, so it's, it's a clever play on, you know, usually it's femme fatale. Dangerous woman here, it's dangerous man. Yeah, I, I quite appreciate... Yeah. Anyway, um, yes, I will try to do this show each week. I am probably only going to do episode one today, because two things that are both over an hour... That's a little much for me to do in one day. If you know, I am also doing a movie this week. If I wasn't, then I'd do these two in the same day. Anyway, I am currently planning on doing episode two Saturday, and starting next week, I'm gonna try to do each episode either the day it comes out or like the day after, something like that. Anyway, yes, um, the the. Um, yes, the, um, yeah, let me, before I get into specifics, let me start by saying I think this is showing a lot of promise. I'm very intrigued as to where it's going. Super happy to see Alice Braga in something again. Really, really, it's been a while since I saw Clive Owen in anything, like, recent. I'm, I'm aware he's, he's done some stuff, you know, but. Yeah, I, I guess, let's see, holy crap, yeah, last time was like Duplicity, which is, you know, 14 years ago, so really glad to see him in something, big fan of him back in the, the 2000s, and the, uh, yeah, um, if you're checking that this video out way down the line, I'm going to put in the link in the description box to every video I have on this show so you don't have to scroll through a bunch of other stuff to get to it and yeah let's get into the specifics so yeah really love that they open on playing the end by the doors and yeah you know within like a minute or two, we it is confirmed. Yes, that is that is Darby listening to it. It's not just for the audience. It's benefit. You know, she takes off her headset, headphones, whatever, and you know the music fades to, to nothing. So, yeah, that's that's how she prepares for any you know this this reading. It's all about her, and she's like this this is the end of the world. You know, so that's that tells us a lot about you know she's a she's an anxious person. Love when you can fit in. It's also just a great song, you know, and it sets a tone. It tells us this is going to be a fairly dark show. And the the cinematography is just stunning from frame one. I'm so glad that cinematography and editing hasn't actually died. Because I'm going to be honest, there's a lot of popular movies these days. I love the MCU, but I, I wish it would be more daring. There's a lot of popular movies these days that just really don't embrace all that you can do with a camera, with, with editing. You know, yeah, there, there was a while where I feared it would actually die. Like, the early 2000s, I was like, okay, I guess c cinema is dead. All we have now are these pop culture things that aren't particularly daring. And, yeah, really, really glad to see that they've, that it's still around. And, yeah, so, Darby walks in, takes off the headset, and then we hear, and now it's time for Darby Hart. So she literally showed up at the last possible moment. And again, this is telling us she's an anxious person. She doesn't want to be hanging around there before she goes up there to read. You know, she... Because it's not like she's just, like, super irresponsible. She did show up. And she was there 
before, just only just before, she wasn't late or something. So yeah, they're doing a really great job setting up the, the major characters. We learn a lot about Darby, Bill, we get a sense of the various other characters you know, Andy has some really great lines that really tell us who he is. And then we have the... Yeah, and she walks up, and I really appreciate how quiet it is. Like, very uncomfortably quiet. You know, you get the sense these people were not really here to listen to her. Several of them walk off, you know. They're there, they were there to listen to the other person, and yeah, she happened to, to be there right after, you know. And yeah, you know, she, she gets up on, on the stage and, you know, starts talking before the, the reading itself. And several people, like, get up and walk away, and just, holy crap, just, yeah, um... I've never been to one of those readings. I don't know if that kind of thing actually happens. I feel like that's not necessarily the show being hyper-realistic, more the show saying this is at least what it feels like. She feels like she's not very impressive to other people. You know, she's happy with who she is, but she's not. she doesn't think that other people care that much. Which, you know, we later find out, well, you know, her parents were not really parenting her as a child. So, yeah, she's grown up feeling like, oh, I guess just nobody gives a fuck. Uh, right, um, there might be some swearing in this video since there is in this episode. And, yeah, the, yeah, so she, yeah, she says, you know, oh, there's 40, 40,000 unidentified bodies in America 20 about half of them are accidents but the other half are murders and the majority of those 20,000 are women you know and yeah now that she's you know she's getting into the the groove she's you know suddenly people are walking back and sitting back down because it's you know okay this is interesting and I really appreciate that we, you know, we learn very quickly also about Darby. She's a rule breaker. You know, we, in, in the, yeah, she, she says that, you know, I know they told me I shouldn't read from the end of the book, but I'm going to. And, you know, there was the thing about she, she hacked into the, the database to find out that was how she learned that there are women, that the majority of the 20,000 murdered unidentified bodies of women. We also have the the detail that, you know, Bill is like trying to talk her out of it and she's like, no, we, you know, we came this far, we're gonna do this thing. So, yeah. And that brings us to the... Yeah, you know, he points out it's breaking and entering even if, you know, what was it? It's up for up for rent or sale, something like that, and, you know, technically he doesn't live there, so, you know, they're, they figure they might not actually run into him, but it's still breaking and entering, it's still against the law. And then we have the, yeah, and, you know, he's, he's nervous, they, they drive off, and, you know, it's, it's kind of tense in the car. And she puts on the music, and it's, I, I think it was called No More I Love Yous. Let's see, yeah, No More I Love Yous by Annie Lennox. And they really do a great job. Like, the chemistry between Emma Corrine and... Uh, hold on, where is she? Uh, Harris Dickinson is is really really great. By the way, I'm aware. I, I just learned that Emma Kareen goes by they them pronouns, not she her. I'm gonna try to to, to you know to to keep to that. If I accidentally mess up, I mean no disrespect. Um, my ADHD diagnosis 
makes it that I sometimes struggle to learn new things. But I have nothing but respect for the LGBTQ plus community. Um, so, you know, if I say she, I'm going to try to make that only when I'm referring to Darby, who as far as I can tell is, I, it does identify as female. Um, let's see. So yes, the, the yeah, great chemistry between, you know, and, and the, the editing really captures how, you know, because, yeah, like, at first, she's like, oh, ah, I'll, I'll turn it back off, you know. And he's like, no, 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 you know. And he's, like, vocalizing, and then he's singing along. And just the, the smile, you know, she can't help but smile at that. You know, it is, like, <laughs> it is kind of adorable. And, yeah, you know, they, they reconnect over loving that, that song. You know, the just, yeah, really, really nicely done. And, let's see, yeah, and, you know, she got the, the hack f from Lee, uh, hmm. for some reason it doesn't, on IMDb it just says Lee, but yeah, Lee, and, you know, he assumes, oh, hacker named Lee must be male, and Darby immediately corrects, no, 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 Lee is female. And, you know, she pointed out, let's see if I can get this quote right, misogyny was destroying the early promise of the internet. And just, yeah, um, such a, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I, I really appreciate the, and, and I, I don't know if Lee is based on a real person, but that does sound like the kind of thing, and, you know, like many vocal feminists online she was targeted uh, by a bunch of misogynists you know they were they were proving her point in in each of these cases you know it's it's feminists saying you know here's here's some things that are misogynist and misogynists saying hold my beer and yeah um you know she points out they they doxed lee they made revenge porn and was it they cut the head off her dog jesus christ you know, just, yeah, um, and, you know, she, she disappeared, nobody knows where she is now, and then, you know, in the present day, Lee is married to, to Andy, and Bill knows Lee, there's that picture where they're, like, I think they were, like, hugging or something, you know, very, very close, certainly, so, yeah, you know, Bill didn't forget about Lee, he, you know, maybe even, sought her out based on, you know, Darby's impassioned introduction there. And turns out the hack opened all of the doors, which is good. And, and, you know, several car alarms are going off because car alarms are triggered by something moving. Some of them are. Some of them, there has to be contact, but some of them are triggered by something moving close to the, you know, you're supposed to turn off the car before you get very close, and yeah, the, the I, I quite appreciate, and I, I love that that doesn't make them stop, they just, okay, hurry, hurry, you know, although I suppose they might look even guiltier if they were driving away when all the car alarms are going off, but yeah, and then we have the, uh, yeah, very tense with the, the stair trip, see you next fall, and, yeah, so they, they, you know, um, they, they didn't find it in the, the first place they looked, and, and, you know, no wonder they tired themselves out, that looked like a lot of work to, to dig all that, you know, or dig, uh, to, yeah, to remove all, what was it, concrete, something like that, you know, and, yeah, no wonder they tired themselves out, and, yeah, fall asleep, and she wakes up at the sound of, like, footsteps, up, I, I think also maybe, like, the door opening, something like that, and she doesn't tell Bill, you know, so by the time they've gotten the, you know, yeah, found the, the body and identified uh, Patricia, yeah, it's the, the, yeah, you know, he heard them, 
Of course he did, because they were, you know, so, yeah, uh, Darby is not always careful, clearly. And, you know, I feel like the reason that she, the, the fact that she didn't tell Bill, it's one of those things of, well, I knew if I told you, then the, you know, you would say no, you would, you know, leave. And that's not a good argument, but that's, you know, I'm not judging, you know, it's a, it's, she's a fictional character. It's just, you know, I, she doesn't have to be, I hate the term, oh, she's not likable. I don't think it's important for characters to be likable. I think it's more important for them to be interesting. And, you, you know, you're free to disagree, but I certainly think that Darby so far is interesting. You know, I really want to see, you know, yeah see her try to solve this this mystery and yeah they they find the the skeleton and she has the the little i think it's like a ring and, and puts you know the you know they they say if you like they should have put a ring on it darby you're a little late and yeah you know the wife was the first victim and sadly that is accurate you know there are a number of cases where it is that sort of thing you know they killed someone close to them wife mother that sort of thing and th yeah they got a taste for killing so they kept going and yeah you know doors open to the stairs and he's standing there with the gun the gun at his side you know and then they start saying the names of the victims you know and we hear a gunshot, we're not told exactly what, so best I can tell, he shot himself knowing, you know, this is, you know, maybe overwhelmed with guilt at the confrontation of all these names. Maybe he felt confident that, you know, this is going to, I mean, for all he knows, the cops are already on their way, and if he's shot two people in the basement, oh, and by the way, there's a skeleton down there. You know, that's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate that. And and she, she's like, oh, I think I think that's enough for, for one night. It's like, I know she's saying she doesn't, she's like ignoring the rules of, of this sort of reading. I'm pretty sure that's like the first thing they tell you. Make sure to end in a place that's going to make them be like, well, now I have to buy the book. Like, just, yeah. And, yeah, we have, you know, why is Bill not here tonight? And, yeah, you know, she, she, we, uh, yeah, the, the, which is, of course, you know, that's an important question, you know, the, the there is some resolution to it in this episode, but I can imagine more stuff will, you know, yeah, come up later in, in later episodes, flashbacks or something like that. And, yeah, Darcy, Darby goes home and, you know, she falls asleep working. So this is a pattern for her. She works herself to sleep, wakes up, keeps working. You know, again, the we're, we're learning a lot about uh, who she is. You know, she, she has several unhealthy habits. You know, she's not sufficiently risk-averse. And, yeah, so she, she, you know, she reads some, some article about Andy, and it mentions, you know, he's, he's eyeing space travel. So, yeah, there's several different billionaire tech bros that that could be referring to. You know the the Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. You know one of the the ones that treats their employees terribly and whines about that things aren't exactly how they would like them to be. So you know a rich person. And then we have the uh, yeah so yeah she's re you know she's getting these texts from the assistant which turns out to be the AI assistant 
Which, yeah, that is very clever. Um, because the this thing of you know having a personal assistant that's there's a lot of rich people that have that, and AI assistants are also a thing. I yeah, it's it's a, a very clever combination of you know and and yeah you know she's like this is this is a hack isn't it and posts it to like the subreddit I think it was for Andy and you know immediately several people like it's it's a hack it's you know it's not it's it's fake in some way one of them is like dude I kind of want to see you download I want to see what happens kind of thing and you know she gets on like one of the one of the face um, webcam thing, chat things. I don't. I'm not sure which app. I don't really use any of them. Uh, the the um, other than the one I'm currently using. I mean, which I don't even know if I don't think can like receive outside. Anyway, other people's feeds. Anyway, the the um, and yeah, we're yeah we're seeing her use a lot of technology, and it is very like second nature for her and yeah you know one of them's like download it i know you have it backed up i know you have a backup of your you know worst case scenario you have to wipe your phone so what it's kind of interesting you got to see where this you know and i didn't ah, it went a little too fast but i did see that she had like 1279 notifications from one specific app so yeah she you know she uses some of these apps a lot and yeah, so she's downloading the thing, and it has, you know, it's, yeah, it has her name, Darby Hart, and it asks, you know, microphone, camera, Bluetooth, you know, and it's like, again, the fact that she keeps clicking allow really tells us just when she's fascinated by something, she can't look away. No, you know, she in in the book reading, she even said, you know, even as I was approaching danger, I didn't back away. You know, and maybe I'm a little too careless, kind of thing. You know, and yeah, so it's augmented reality AI, very very good. You know, she holds up the thing, and then she can see him on the screen, but she can't see him with, you know, without that, and, and, you know, he goes into the, the Bluetooth speakers to ask her to let him in, it just, yeah, and I don't know that much about augmented reality, but I'm pretty sure he didn't actually need to ask, like, if, I feel like that, you know, maybe he's a vampire, but I think that is supposed to be, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm not going to just invade your personal space more than I already have. You know, you have to invite me in. And, yeah, you know, she puts down the phone, and looking at that, it looks like he's sitting on the on the chair, which, yeah, love it. Um, and then we have the, yeah, you know, <laughs> he mentions that Andy has introduced him to several things that blew his mind. It was like Borges and Beyonce, The Simpsons, and she's like, I binged The Simpsons when I had my wisdom teeth pulled, which, yeah, you know, there are definitely, I have some issues with Simpsons, including early seasons, I, you know, and certainly I, I can't really speak to any of the more recent, I think I stopped, I don't know, season 10, and thinking back, I should probably have stopped, like, season 8, maybe even season 7. As in, season 7 should have been the last one that I watched. But, you know, it is, certainly, early stuff is very bingeable, and, you know, ah, uh, crap, what was the name of the AI? Um, I guess I'll just call him AI. Sorry, dude. Um, but, the, yeah. The AI is like, you connected with Lisa Simpson. Which is, you know, it's very bold of him to assume that. But it also shows, A, he's very intuitive. Because he is, of course, right. And B, he does not completely respect people's privacy. Or, 
No, yeah, privacy is later when he checks the temperature and is like, you need a bath. But here is more like, you know, that's not the kind of, like, they literally met like two minutes ago and he's like, you're into Lisa Simpson. It's like, okay, okay, just, she might have said, she might have offered that up if she if you had given her a few more seconds, you know. But, yeah, you know, the, the, Let's see. Yeah, and the so so she you know she agrees to the the invitation. She calls her father, and like you know he's he says, "Oh wow, it's really early there," you know. But right after that, he talks about the case he's on, going into really like extreme detail. You know, he's not like uh, I'm I'm technically working a case right now, but you know. Let's not. I don't. I don't want to get into it. No, he's like, oh, you know, this is the kind of, of wound that it, the you know this yeah. It's, uh, do they call it wound when it's a dead person? I don't follow a lot of true crime. Um, yeah, what whatever. I, th I think you know what I what I mean. And and you know she's like, Ooh, I know what tool was used, and he's like. Very impressive. You're still really good at this, you know. So that's that's still their relationship. You know, she said earlier, you know, he's a um, he works in a morgue. So I saw a lot of dead bodies when I was young, and yeah, it's you know that doesn't like freak him out or something. Like some people, you know, if if their kid has a certain, you know, works a certain field, they might be like, oh, I should never have taken you along to all those. No, he's like, you're still really good at this. No wonder that, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, she tells him about getting the invitation. And, yeah, and, and you know, they, they go, she goes to the, the plane, and the, I think his, yeah, Todd. I appreciate that they cast someone who does have a somewhat, like, I don't know if creepy is the right word. It, let's go with intense. He has a, he has a somewhat intense face. Have I really not seen him? I, I thought I recognized him, but maybe it's just from, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, He was in a, Thing I watched. Is it a spoiler to say? I'll just say I've I've seen him in at least one thing. But yeah, um, Todd, the head of security, he went to the reading, and yeah, you know, he was like checking up on her. He was making sure to, you know, yeah, seeing if it would be a good idea to to invite her. And there's a there's a health check she has to sign, uh, you know. Um, ah, crap! I forget what it's called, but yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, they take this very seriously, and the inside of the plane is nicer than the inside of my living room. You know, it's just like holy crap! This is, yeah, very very fancy, <laughs> and I, I appreciate that. Uh, Lou May talks about, you know, oh, you know, I, I hate flying, so if, you, if you're going to sit there, you're in the splash zone, you know, and, and Darby's, you know, and, and just before that, Darby's like, is it okay for me to sit here? And she's like, it's not my plane, you know, <laughs> which, yeah, again, that really, t you know, it's, she's not super worried about making a positive first impression here, you know, she, because that's, that is remarkable honesty. She, I mean, she's basically saying, I don't care. Sit anywhere, you know, just where, like, the polite thing would maybe be, sure, I, I don't mind, you know. So, again, you know, it gives us a strong sense of, of who the, the character is. She's also someone I look forward to learning more about over the course of the show. And, yeah, I quite like, you know, she meets Martin, the, the filmmaker, and he's been reading her book 
because he wants the the let's see he wanted to he's he wants to make a documentary about like what was it missing women or women who were the the who um, victims of violent crime something like that in was it DC I think it was it was the place he was from certainly and yeah again you know that is it's there is there is overlap there uh, you know Darby is focusing on you know she she makes one book about one specific serial killer and Martin is you know I doubt he's only going to talk about one specific killer he's probably going to go over a bunch of different ones you know and it's not that either of them are are wrong it's just those are the you know she loves to dive deep into one specific person going around killing and the the lives he ruins by that martin is saying this entire community has been really destroyed by all of these different violent you know and and it is also um this is going to get really stereotypical. I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but I do hear that a lot of young women are especially passionate about true crime, and it's in part a way of, like, feeling safe. Like, if you live in a place where you might get attacked by a crocodile, maybe you try to figure out, okay, you know, what can you do in that circumstance, you know? And Martin, a young black person is going to focus on what can I do to help my specific community you know the black community of DC which if that was where he's from you know so so yeah it's there's a it's very credible the show so far in that and <laughs> yeah um, Darby is not very happy to give up her her cell phone saying this is like 50 percent of my brain you know and the response is this way you'll get to appreciate a deviceless journey or something like that you know which does sound like the kind of thing that you would try to yeah that's like the, that kind of environment is going to say those and that. And then we get my favorite line of the entire episode when Darby asks Lume, can I, you know, can I have some of the, because she also, you know, she had a panic attack last time she tried to get on a plane. And, you know, Lou tosses them into her hand, knock yourself out. Very nicely done. Yeah, that's... I love when someone says something like that and it is the literal meaning they're not only using because that's the thing she is also using it in the you know knock yourself out usually just it's a it's a finger of speech it normally just means you know yeah sure go ahead but here you know it's yeah sure go ahead and knock yourself unconscious with these pills so you can get through the flight easier and let's see. And I also can't help but note that she's not like, okay, but make sure that you only take, I don't know, one pill, two pills, or it's really going to mess you up. Because if you know very much about, like, so I'm, I'm guessing it's like sleeping pills, you really don't want to take too many of those. That's not, and, you know, your body is not just going to be like, ah, you know, what? That's, that's a few too many. Let's just spit those out, you know. Have them rocket directly out of the nostril. No, no, no. Your body is not going to... to, to yeah. Um, and Darcy... Darby. I'm just... I'm not used to the name Darby. It's... Anyway. Darby seemingly wakes up, although I think it might have been a nightmare. Uh, you know. But, yeah. She wakes up on the plane, and each time... Nearly each time she wakes up, it's in a very tense situation, you know. She wakes up in the house they, she and Bill broke into to the sound of footsteps of, you know, that 
might be the owner, very likely to be the owner, you know, the serial killer that they're after. But by the way, great hand acting. You know, we only, we, we just see, like, his hands and his legs. Fantastic. Like, right up there with the thing in the Adams Family movies. Anyway, the, the, um, yeah, you know, she, she seemingly wakes up on the, on the plane and, you know, we, we see Martin, like, and there's these sounds of distress, just, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, there's this, like, dream flashback kind of thing where, you know, Bill is in the tub and says, I thought we were going to die. You know, although I guess that's more of a, like, a dream, because later she has a flashback where the tub is empty, and he wrote on the wall, so maybe she figured that that was, or maybe she walked him, you know, she saw him like that, and was like, don't be such a baby, and left. So, you know, because, you know, they, he does say later, you're this mix of fragile and hardened. And then we have the... Yeah, and yeah, the the thing of, you know, I left you, I left you the, wait, was it, oh, right, that's right, it is right after in the, in the, yeah, anyway, you know, the, the, yes, I left you the car, this feels like too much and yet not enough, enough. and yeah, they, the, the destination was Iceland, which, yeah, does look amazing. Um, yeah, great idea for, you know, this is something that, even in this episode, and I can imagine over the, the course of the show, you know, the cameras are going to take great advantage of because it is unbelievably photogenic of a place. But it is also, it works as this sort of thing of like, well... You know, these billionaire tech bros like to, to isolate themselves physically from, you know, so, so yeah, very, very nicely. Or wait, or is that only in, in murder mysteries that they do that? I actually, thinking about it, I'm, I'm not sure I've heard of it happening in, in real life. But, you know, I could buy it, certainly. It doesn't feel ridiculous. Like, if, if I found out, oh, you know, this is Darby's, you know, idea of, of a place, then I'd be like, no, that doesn't make sense. You know, I'm, I'm not sure she loves being around people, but she, I, I don't really get the sense that she would choose. Like, she goes because of Lee, basically. Basically. And... Yeah, love the the sweeping camera, you know, showing all the the this gorgeous nature of of Iceland, and you know, showing the the little the actual living area, and yeah, she gets a ring key, which is going to unlock, you know, specific. You know, it's going to unlock the door to her own room and then specific places that are allowed for her to go. You know, very cool place. Iceland, I mean. The, the living areas also. And, yeah, Ray, that's right. Ray, the AI assistant, is, is back. And, you know, I love that... Almost immediately, she asks, "Can I see you, like, back in my place?" So you know, it's it's again this thing of you know, like, there's a lot of people who you know entering a, you know their living quarters, finding out, oh, there's an AI assistant in here. You know, they'd be like, "Can I turn you off? You can't see me, can you? This is really creepy." But no, she's like, "This is fascinating. You know, what else can you do?" Kind of thing. And yeah, at the at the dinner table, Oliver points out, uh, you know how how complex deep fakes have gotten, and even demonstrates with a recording 
of you know yeah Sion saying what was it like fuck Earth I'm going to Mars bitches or something like that which yeah and then we have the right the we meet Andy and he actually called his kid Zoomer like Zoomer the Zoomer I really hope that that turns out to like be not as ridiculous no but yeah uh, rich people do name their their kids completely ridiculous things sometimes so that is sadly very credible and Let's see. Yeah, and they talk about, you know, oh, so there are these hot springs, which I do believe is accurate. As, uh, you know, I've never been, but I hear that Iceland and other places have these these hot springs. And, you know, yeah, they're like, you know, you. I promise you, you are going to sleep like babies tonight. Which is, of course, why your room is stocked with diapers. And, or, or, I don't know, uh, that's probably not what she means. I think what she means is, you're going to wake up every half hour really fussy. And, let's see, then we have, yeah, uh, Andy says that he considers Ray not artificial intelligence, but alternative intelligence. And as soon as he starts saying that, Zoomer says it at the exact same time, so, yeah, this is something he says all the time. And, yeah, Zoomer probably uses Ray as well uh, when, you know, yeah, if he's, like, playing by himself or something. And, yeah, they bring up, yeah, Andy brings up climate change. And I noticed one of the... Um, one of the characters is about to give Zoomer bread, and Zoomer seems happy to take it, but Andy says no, and he doesn't say exactly why. I, I don't know if that's going to turn out to be, like, I mean, maybe it's, my, my first thought would be, is it possible that it's some kind of, like, gluten-free thing or something, or maybe... They already prepared a very careful portion. Maybe he doesn't like the idea of other people giving Zoomer food. Zoomer shouldn't. Zoomer should turn that down or something. I, I don't know. But it was definitely. There's. I don't think it's random. I, I think it is. There is a reason for it. And yeah, he talks about, you know, everyone at this table represents original thought and that is what is going to change the world you know which that is one of those things like I do think there is some truth to that it also feels like the kind of thing that tech bros are like oh you know this is yeah they sometimes perhaps over exaggerate um, or perhaps not so much that of others as much as their own and <laughs> poor Darby, you know, she wasn't ready for Bill to be sitting right across, you know, so she, like, she picks up a little thing and puts it in her mouth, and Bill sits right in front of her, they make eye contact, and she, like, swallows, and then she starts coughing, and everyone's like, are you okay? Is that, you know, which is just so awkward. At least Bill doesn't, like, make a big deal out of it or anything. You know, it just, it went down the wrong pipe, but, yeah, that's, let's see, and, yeah, Zoomer wants to be a doctor and is carrying around this little toy doctor, or, you know, bag thing, and, and Bill is like, I see you are a doctor, you're, you're young for a doctor, oh, huh? wow, I actually, I have this, this thing, like, uh, I think like my 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 chest maybe can you can you take a look you know because dude is really good with kids that's exactly the because you know yeah the kid's gonna like you know put the the stethoscope on and and listen to the heartbeat you know that's some of the that's the kind of thing that that kids who like playing pretending to be a doctor yeah you know that's the so and and again. Andy says no. Andy, no. 
not Van End, you know, not the monster. Um, monster adjacent, you know, fascist helper. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, again, I, I don't know, it just, it felt like, why, why not, though? I mean, Zoomer seems fine, and it's, you know, Bill is okay with it, so, yeah. And, and I do also like the, the, you know, he points out, you know, Zoomer really bugged me in order for this to happen, you know, he wasn't supposed to join us for dinner, but he kept, you know, arguing, and eventually, yeah. And, yeah, and, and later in the, um, I just said, Hot Springs Pool, I think it was called, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, why were, why was this and this person invited kind of thing, and, you know, Martin is like, Andy is someone whose product launches are more anticipated than tentpole films, like, if hypothetically someone who could hear me right now had been cast in Deadpool 3, I mean, it's not going to be as big as, as this guy's pro. You know, seriously though, I am really looking forward to Emma Corrine in that. And yeah, they talk about, you know, this is like an audition. And yeah, so afterwards they, you know, they they, they go back and... So she she sees Bill, and this is the first time that they're, like, alone together. And without hesitation, she punches him in the gut and then says, Want to have drinks? So that's, yeah. I feel like that's that sums up Darby in a nutshell. You know, this is how she responds to, to seeing someone that you know, what was it, six years ago, just up and left, you know, it's not one or the other, and there's no build-up to, to either, it's just immediately, you know, because that's the kind of thing, you know, there's a lot of, it's, it's more of like a, a masculine thing, there's a lot of young guys who, if they see a, a friend that they haven't seen in a long time, will, like, punch, it won't necessarily be the gut, it might be, like, the shoulder or something, but, yeah, you know, and, you know, he turns down drinks, and she's about to walk away, and then he says, how about a walk? And, <laughs> yeah, you know, he he claims why he's supposedly there, and then she's like, no, why are you really here? And, you know, he notes, yeah, nothing gets past you except the truth. And, yeah, they talk about, you know, is it is it bravery, or is it something else? And I really love her line about, you know, he said, I think you only li really like women. She says, all women only really like women, just as all men only really like men. Uh, you know, that's why sports were invented, so that guys could be intimate with each other, which... I think there is a lot of truth to it. I don't think it's the only reason. I'm, I'm not into sports, so I honestly wouldn't know. Uh, obviously, there wouldn't be anything wrong with it. The, you know, I, I really look forward to the day where we stop acting like homosexuality and, and bisexuality and pansexuality is like wrong compared to heterosexuality rather than just different who cares you know they they should have the same rights but yeah i do think there is a lot of truth to her assertion there and yeah so she goes back to, to the room and ray is like you need a hot bath and she's like you read my mind and he says body actually you're uh, your ring checks your reads your body temperature which again like holy crap that's creepy you know and just yeah um the, let's see yeah and and you know she's like cool no it, it should be hot 
Jarvis, we're going to have to do something about your, your ability to perceive sarcasm. See, that's how you know it's not Jarvis, because Jarvis dives like headfirst into sarcasm at any opportunity. And let's see. Yeah, and you know, after the the bath, uh, we have some some casual topless nudity. I've never minded nudity. I was raised to appreciate that, you know, it's it's our bodies. Sometimes we're going to be, you know, don't don't push someone, you know, don't don't force someone else to to see you naked if they're not comfortable with it. Don't try to look at somebody else naked if they're not comfortable with that. But beyond that, you know, it's not a, a big deal. And I kind of feel like this is also that. I'm not sure that it's like saying something other than, I guess, again, just, you know, this is this is her being very comfortable. It didn't feel, you know, the, the moment that n there's nudity, someone's going to be like, oh, that was gratuitous. I, it didn't really feel, it, it didn't feel sexualized enough to be gratuitous to, to me, but yeah. And, you know, yeah, she goes to, to his room, which, you know, he said, if you change your mind, you know, it's room 11. So she goes there and she hears some moaning, which, of course, makes her think, I guess we got impatient and got together with maybe Lee or something. But then we also hear, like, crashing. And, you know, she runs around because there's, you know, a lot of windows in this place and which I think wasn't there also windows where she was like topless so yeah I mean maybe you know some some people just don't think of or you know don't really care about if they are concealing their their naked bodies and again I don't think there's anything wrong with that so yeah you know she she goes around and she sees it is indeed Bill and there's like blood and he's like stay stay with me until I go or something like that and the episode ends and I have been talking for almost as long as the episode is so yeah um, wasn't quite planning on that but I'll I'll be fine hopefully you found it as interesting as I did yeah uh, really, really excited to see what happens next. And this is, of course, you know, the the I've I've seen people compare this to stuff like Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, and yeah, it does feel like that sort of you know you get a bunch of important, well-defined characters, you know, yeah, characters that are well-defined that are important people in their respective worlds try to get like famous actors really really talented actors so that it's harder for the audience to guess because if there's like oh, okay that's the only actor who's like really talented you're gonna be like okay that's definitely the killer then they're gonna give him a big monologue and people are gonna be like oh that's what I came to see that actor act but yeah um I'm very interested to see who is behind the, you know, obviously there's a couple of things. If it were Lee, that would explain why he let her in. And I can also imagine she has like a universal key. It could be like staff because it, it kind of needs to be someone who has a universal key. You know, and yeah, if if it's if it's Lee, maybe her motivation is that she doesn't like that Bill and Darby, you know, might get back together. You know, maybe she maybe she was hoping that she'd be able to to kill Bill. Volume two, specifically in front of Darby, to to get revenge over this perceived slight. Maybe it's the maybe it's some staff member who's doing it to frame Lee, and yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of options. I'm really looking forward to 
you know, getting more, you know, some evidence, some red herrings, yeah. And, yes, I will catch you Saturday with episode two. And, yeah, really excited to see where this goes.